we are on, we are in verse 8. No, 9. 9. 9. Hosea 2, verse 9. So what is the first, so what's the first, the first root there? The first word, Rodaf. Do we know what it means? To chase down and tackle. So let's look at some verses. Uh, we're going to start in Breshit, Yud Dalit, Pasuk Arba Esrei, 14, 14, very good. <coughs> Who is taken captive? Lot. Okay, Vishma Abram, and he heard. Ki Nishva, so there's a, there's a Shin Bet root, Shevi, which means captivity. So he is taken captive. <coughs> his brother, he wasn't really his brother. So uh, he uh, arms the children of his house. In other words, those who are born in his house. And how many are there? 318, you should know this number because it's a famous number. And he pursues them to Dan. In other words, he runs after them and he gets them. You know about 318? Eliezer, take the gematria of Eliezer. It equals 318. So the rabbis say, well, yeah, so just Abraham and Eliezer went. So you're just the two guys. Oh, okay, wait a minute. All right. Let's look at, we're looking at Radaf Shemot, also Yudalit, and we are on Pasuk Shmone. Who's, who's running after who? All right, Hazak. He made it strong. Yahweh, the heart of Pharaoh the king of Egypt, and he is pursuing after. Now, he didn't catch them, but he meant to catch them. Having a walk in the park, he was pursuing after them. So he's running after the Bnei Yisrael, and they, Yotzim, this is a participle form. They are going out with the Yad Rama. I'm, I won't make that motion here, right? But forget about you, Pharaoh. We're headed out. So it's this kind of chasing. He's chasing them seriously. Okay, and we have to look at Mizmor. One more verse for this. Mizmor Kafgimo. Uh, Pasuk Shish. Okay, so you know the whole psalm by heart. Ah, surely. Surely goodness and mercy. And this is how dogs are. Dogs are just always running right after you and loving you. Even if you're shooting them with a gun, they're too stupid. Call you mechai all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of Yahweh all the days of, uh, forever. So this is the opening word of uh, Hosea 2.9. <clears throat> it's talking about the wife and what is she running after? Her lovers, okay? And so that's what it says, Rudba et Mahabeha. And she will, she'll be chasing down her lovers, okay? Velo tasig. So tasig is a verb that we haven't had. And uh, so we're going to look at some words for that. We're going to start in Bereshit, Lamed Allah. I do, if, if it's, you know, meaningful, I try and pull the first use of, of the root. Esrim uh, v'chamesh. So who's chasing who? Laban's chasing Jacob, and he catches him. Okay, so this is the, um, this is the root tasig, seek catch, to apprehend, okay, so it has some uh, broader meanings, which we will be looking at in Breshit Mem Zion, this pasuk is Tesha, I love this verse, because it has all these smichuts in it, see, there are multiple smichuts, the this of that, of this, of the other thing, okay, so who's speaking, Jacob, and he's speaking to, and he's come down to Okay, and so he says, Yeme Shene Migurai. Yeme is from Yamim. <clears throat> the days of Shene is from Shanim. The years of <clears throat> Migurai means uh, like my traveling around, like a gear, right? The days of, he's talking about his life, but he's just saying that my journey. The days of the years of my journeying are how much? Shloshim Meat Shana. 130. 30 and 100. Okay, he's 130. 
uh, ma'at. This is what he thinks that they are. He says they're ma'at, a little bit, and ra'im, evil, a you. Okay, he's saying, I just have a little bit of you. It's 130. And it, it hasn't been so great. And then he says again, yemei shenei chayai. These are the days of my life, the days of the years of my life, chayai. Below he siku. They haven't caught up with, they haven't uh, uh, approached, caught with. And who is he comparing himself to? Yemei shenei chayai avotai. What is the fathers? The days the of the years of, the lives of, of the lives of the fathers. Okay, this is a very important verse for smichut. Okay. <clears throat> uh, in the days of their journeys, of their travels, okay? A catch, uh, I don't know, to maybe uh, apprehend, is that also? Attain. Another verse. Vayikra. Uh, it looks like Yudalid. Esrim Bishtaim. Oh, so this is an interesting uh, interpretation. Let's see what it is. Okay, Leviticus is all about different um, offerings, right? So, what is what is the offering that he's bringing now? Shtei Torim, two turtle doves. Well, there's some kind of doves. I don't know. The important thing is they're not turtles. <laughs> yeah, because in in the uh, Song of Solomon, I think somewhere it says Torim, and it's translated as okay, turtle. The turtles. This, this, turtles and they drop doves. Yeah, but uh, it's not turtles. It's birds. Okay. The That's right. Turtles. The voice of the turtles heard in the land. Or, shnei b'nei yona, what is that? Two, two sons of doves, right? Okay, so who brings this very small offering? This is the minimal offering for the poor person. Okay, either he can bring turtle doves or pigeons or something. And then it says, asher tasig yado, what he can attain in his hand. Okay, it's, this is the point, it's a minimal thing, and this is what he can get. Because um, because he's poor, and then it gives you the instructions for what they are. One is for the sin, and the other one is for the Allah. All right, one more Yeshayahu, Nun Aleph, Asuk Echadasre. And this uh, verse actually is appears uh, in Isaiah twice, but it's translated di differently each time, and I don't know why. Fiduye. So we've been talking about a little bit about this fu. So what is the root for this verb? Fiduye. Well, it's got to start with the first letter of the word there. Pada. And what is pada? Do we know? To redeem. Okay. When the first son is uh, is born, there's a ceremony called Pidyon ha Pidyon Haben. The redeeming of the firstborn son. These are a smichut, right? Anything that ends in A is a smichut. The redeemed of Zion, the U tells you that it's passive, right? Those who are not redeemed of Zion. The redeemed of Yahweh, Yeshivu, they will return. And where are they coming? To Zion, to Zion. Barina. Remember Rina? Right. Roni, Roni. Okay, in rejoicing. Simcha, happiness, olam, forever, everlasting happiness, uh, al rosham, yeah. on their heads. I don't know what that means, but uh, that's what it is, everlasting joy upon their heads. And sason b'simcha, again, uh, sason, do you know sason? No. It's another word for joy. It's another word. We have lots of words for joy, okay? We have very happy people. All right. Uvshafte mayim b'sason mimayne from the wells of Yeshua. And with joy, you will suck up water <laughs> like a vacuum cleaner. All right. All right. So sason b'simcha yasigun. They will achieve this joy and, and happiness. Okay. They will attain it. Nasu. Yes. They're fleeing away. These things are fleeing away. Yagon. It's like agony, right? It's almost a, um, it is probably a cognate, uh, and, um, and sighing. Sorrow and sighing will flee away, okay? So this is another kind of thing that they, up, is maybe more like obtain or attain. We are going back to Hosea, to 
chapter 2, verse 9, because uh, she will run after her lovers, but lo tasik o tam, she won't catch them. Okay, she will not obtain them. Ubi kashtam, what's bakasha? Please, right? She's requesting them. The tam at the end is then. Bakasha, please. She's requesting them. Velo timza. Timza. What are all these tops? Tasik. Timza. So she will do something. So what's matza? It's not matza. She will not find. The amra. She will say, Eilcha. What is this? Eilech. Eilech. I will go. I will go. I will definitely go. The ashuva. Shu. And I will return El Ishi Harisha. My first man, my first husband. Ki Tovli. It is good to me. Az me ata. Then it is now. The mem is used as a comparative. That just, you know, that from mem. It'll be better for me if I go home than it is for me now. Because she's chasing after these guys. And who stops her from achieving her goal? Of course, God's. Verse 10. He. Lo yada. She doesn't know. Ki. What? That. Anachi. I. Natati. Gave la. Okay, and he gave her three things. Dagan. Tirosh. Don't know. And Yitzhar. Okay. Dagan is grain. Sometimes it's translated as corn. Okay, I know that a lot of people think that Dagon was a fish god. I think he was probably a wheat god. Okay, if you think about it, you know the Popat? This is the Popat, right? So you could see it, and they say it's, it belonged to Dagon. You could see that it might be a fish, right? Uh, but it, it would still have little scales on it. But if it wasn't a fish, it might be a, a head of wheat. So it's not really possible to tell who he is. I mean, not talking about him. the poor Pope. Do you know who lost the Pope is? The Pope, the Pope, actually, I saw this. It was in Italian, but, you know, you can recognize enough words, and there was an English translation. He said, it is impossible for a person to have a personal relationship with Jesus if you don't go through the church. The Pope is lost. Pray for the Pope. All right. So, that is a Dagon, to a grain or corn or something. Tirosh is wine or new wine. Okay, and it's it's an interesting derivation. It comes from yarash. So yarash is one of those words that means uh, the opposite of itself. It means to dispossess in order to possess, and it has to do with people, land. You kick them out. So you kick them out so you can move in. Well, you tell me. Let's think about how do we get wine. That's right, and the juice comes out. Zeus is dispossessed of the grape. Okay? But also, another thing happens if you drink too much wine. I was going to say, you have to get the wine in, you get dispossessed. You get dispossessed of your mind. So it can be either one of those things. It's an interesting idea. Yitzhar, so what is Yitzhar? The three th we're going to talk about the three things when we get to the end of the verse. What is Yitzhar? It does. All right, let's look at a Breshit. Vav, what happens in Vav? Pasuk Shesh Esrei. Noah. So we're talking about building the ark. Okay? And so at the very top of the ark, there's a Tzohar. It's translated as a window. It's something to let light in. What is the lightest part of the Saharayim? Ah, you knew that. I knew that. That's all right. Saharayim is the afternoon, and it does. it is actually biblical. What we're talking about is something that has to do with light. All right, let's finish translating in Genesis. Uh, you'll make a window for the teva, for the ark, and um, it'll, it's, a, it's a cubit uh, above. You will finish it from on top, mimala, and a door to the ark on his side, and uh, you will uh, make a lower deck and a second deck and a third deck, right? Tachtim is a lower one, right, underneath. Shnaim is the second one, and Shlishim. It's not, there are not 30 decks, there are three decks. First, second, and third. Lower, second, and third, okay? So, we're looking at this back in uh, Hosea, all 
All right, and we've got these three things. Now think about it. You've got the corn, you've got the wine, and then you've got something shiny. What is it going to be? Oil. Okay, so this has to do with oil. All right, we'll talk about these three things in a minute. Let's finish translating this verse. See, so she didn't know that I, I am God, I gave her the corn and the new wine and the oil. And what else? Kesef, you know? Silver. Silver. Herbeti. What is the root for this? Rabba. What is Rab? Rab? Great. I have multiplied, right? Remember, when you get to four, that's the stage of multiplication. I multiplied silver to her. And also something else, and Zahav. Okay, now this is a little bit odd construction, Asu. So what form is this Asu? They made the Baal, for the Baal. So it doesn't say who's making it, okay? But basically, there's a scripture, right, that, you know, whatever uh, evil people store up will be given to people who will use it. What is that scripture? Is it Proverbs? Okay. There you go wealth of the wicked. So all this stuff which was prepared for the for the Baalim, for the false gods, God is saying, I gave her all this stuff that was prepared for false gods. It's interesting. How can we look at this corn and new wine or in any kind of wine? Sometimes it's new and sometimes it's not an oil. And it's listed over and over and over and over again. So what is this talking about? It's whatever you need. So it's basically all your provision and everything you need. Well, I think here it's more of the idea of, um, of a salve for, for medicine or uh, beauty oil, <laughs> anointing, that kind of thing. Ms. Moore, <laughs> Kuf Dalin. Who can remember what number is Kuf? Pasuk. Meshesre tells you what all these things are for. So they're all different words, but they're the same products, right? Yayin, wine, yismach, samach, to make happy, levav, enosh, the heart of man, but particularly the mortal man. Okay. <laughs> so this is tzahal. It's not tzahal like the army tzahal. It's a root that means to shine also. So you can see that this is a cognate for Tsahar. Right? You've got the liquid, the L and R are considered to be liquid sounds. Uh, and you know that people confuse them because people say fly lice, right? Okay, so it's a common uh, change from L to R in that liquid sound. To make the shine, the panim, from Shemin oil, okay? I looked up about the anointing oil, and actually, uh, Shemin is always used for it. It's Shemin Mishcha, the oil of anointing. So it always uses Shemin, okay? And Lechem, Levav Enosh, the heart of the man, Yisad, strengthens, okay? So somebody before, when, when we said, uh, Sahar, they said Zohar, Sahar, and it is that's also a cognate. What is the what is the book which is called the Zohar? It's got way out stuff, and you said it's for wisdom. It's the main text of Kabbalah. Zohar. Yeah, it's a nice name. It means light. It means light. Mm -hmm. Shining. So it's a nice name, and it's it's totally cognate to this Sahar, and it's a little bit cognate to Sahar. So, but what is this tzahal? Some of you have Something shirts that say it. What is it? It's the idea. Okay. Oh, Sava mm -hmm. is an army. Hagana, what does Hagana mean? Defense, as in magen, shield. Le Yisrael. This tzahal has nothing to do with this tzahal. That's the main point. Yeah, Hagana. Ha Hagana. Ha -hagana. Yes. Oh, right, right. It is Ha Hagana. Haganah, because it, Haganah is the noun. Haganah defense is the noun, and it's the Haganah. It's smichut, okay? So it's the army of the defense, okay? So tzavah doesn't uh, change much in smichut. 
So, right, so what do we see about these three things? From Psalm, do we finish reading Psalm uh, 104, 15? These things, the wine is to gladden your heart, the, uh, the oil is to brighten your face, and the bread is to um, make you strong, to sustain you, to strengthen you, okay? And so that covers everything, everything about life, okay? Maybe we could drag it out and say one of these was your body, and one was your soul, and one was your spirit, right? The oil represents the spirit, although I have taught you that the wine represents the spirit, but you could see it the, another way off. These are the essentials of life. She thinks she's gotten them from her lovers, and God says, no, I gave her this. Verse 11, we're going to do one more verse here tonight. We know almost all the words because we're so smart. Lachen, therefore, Ashu. I will return. Vilakakti, I will take. Digani, my grain. This is the grain that God has given her. He's going to take it back. But Ito, what is this et? Which et is this? In its time, you got a good hint because the next one is in his Moed, right? What is he taking back in the Moed? Hirosh, the wine in his Moed. Et. That is a time that's like a season time. It's not like how many times I, did you do this or how many times or what time is it? It's none of those. It's like a, in a season and also my wine, uh, my, my right, my wine in his moed, in his appointed time. Okay? And then the next verb uh, is a very interesting, and the root is, what is the root? Natsa. You know, it has to do with saving or rescuing. Hatsilu, Hatsilu. Is that what that, is that yes, if you're drowning in Israel, just say Hatsilu, somebody will come get you. All right, we're going to have a little bit of uh, looking around for things. Divrei Hayamim Bet. What is Divrei Hayamim? Divrei Hayamim. Chronicles. So, what does Divrei Hayamim mean? The words of the day, right? <laughs> Kaf. Kaf is Kaf. Esrim B'chamesh is the verse. Esrim B'chamesh. Okay. So I picked out all different binyanim so that we could get a feeling for this. All right. So now the question is, where is Chronicles in your Bible? It's at the end. It's at the end. That's right. It's a lot. So what's happening? Jehoshaphat and who? And his people. Okay. They have just won this great battle. Yay. And so they are going out la voz. So this is a hollow, well, sometimes it's considered to be a hollow root. And sometimes it's considered to be, I finally learned the name for these roots that have the same double last letter, but they go in and out using the last letter. They're called geminate. So this is a geminate. So what is the root for, for uh, bazaz? Boaz, huh? No, Boaz means Boaz, which means in Oz, drink. Okay. This means to steal, but to, to um, what's the word when you take booty? What is plunder. It? plunder, plunder, plunder. Here we go. Loot. Loot. Good. Okay. So they're out on the field looting. Okay. And, uh, Okay, and so they're going la voz shalalam. And so you should know shalal because it's one of the first words you ever learn. Spell it after you learn how to spell shalom. <laughs> you can spell shalal. Remember, Isaiah has a son with a big long name. Oh, Maher shalal chashbaz. Quick to the booty, right? So, so they're, they're doing what you do with, with plunder. They're plundering plunder, but it's two different words. La voz and shalal. Okay, they're plundering the plunder. The yimsu matza, uh, they fi they're finding behind amongst them la rov, a lot. Okay, rechush, wealth. Fragim, unfortunately, is dead bodies. Okay, clay famudot. So clay is this very inclusive word that means you know appliances and appurtenances. What? utensils, but here chamod means, chamod means desired so it's talking about precious jewels ok, 
pay or some kind of jewelry. And what did they do? They nutsalled it. Okay? They're saving it. They're rescuing it from the dead bodies. Okay? Uh-huh. La ain masa until they couldn't carry anymore. Okay, masa from Nasa. They can't carry anymore. And how many days were they there looting? Three. Yihiyu Yamim Shlosha Yamim Bozazim. There's with your double Zion. Et Hashalal, the plunder. Ki Rabhu, because it was a lot. So this is a Pa'al form of Natsal. And you can see it by the um, by the declension. Okay. Yin Natsalu. It's got all the pieces of the root um, and the proper prefix and the proper suffix for they did something. It's a pa'al form. Oh, the next forms will wait till next week. Yay! Thank you.